Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Anthony Peake Consciousness Hour. Um, this particular show I've been looking forward for so long. Um, our uh, guest today is, is Mark Townsend, and I've known Mark now for ooh, probably at least 10 years, probably longer. Um, and Mark was somebody that contacted me after I think my book, The Damon, came out. And he suggested that I, he either sent me or I, I, I got a copy of his book, The Wizard's Gift, which I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed. And we'll probably talk about that a little bit. But what I'd like to do is initially to just interview, uh, to introduce Mark and for Mark to tell us a little bit about himself and his background, how he came across my work and how it, it, it interfaces with his own background. Because Mark's background is absolutely fascinating, and this is going to be such an enjoyable interview. But before we go any further, Mark, you were just telling Sarah and I something that happened last night, which sums yeah. up, I think, your wonderful life. <laughs> yeah, and lovely, lovely to, to be here with, with both of you. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me. Um, yeah, we, we were talking about, about magic and, and the, the sort of magic that I do. Um, I'm very interested in all, all kinds of magic, but I, I like old fashioned sleight of hand card tricks. Um, so I was doing some in the pub last night because um, some people that I knew, uh, they, they wanted to show me a trick mark. And there, there was a, a nearby couple I'd never seen before, a young couple. And um, and they'd say, oh, show us a trick. So we got talking. And it's lovely. These sort of things really, really, really make doing magic, but they make it beautiful to me because um, I was able to to give them a deck of cards, get, get them to share it between them. Um, Ian and Emma, their names were. And um, and then with a little bit of manipulation, I got them to choose each other's card, um, a king of hearts and a queen of hearts. And I even said before that, I want you, Ian, to think what card would you really associate with Emma and of course he said Queen of Hearts um, and so it was just it was a really lovely and that it's it's when sort of magic as entertainment crosses over into something else because then we got talking and they're engaged and they've invited me to do their wedding so it's just it's just such a, a you know lovely because I love that I love how how things that some people might associate might sort of consider as as childish are actually very profound you know and and tap into they tap into places magic taps into places that 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 i think in a sense we it does take us back to childhood but childhood wonder and an enchantment and and the beauty of life and so you know that was a, a nice little story well it's one of the <laughs> things i've always loved about your postings on facebook and your <laughs> postings elsewhere you have a wonderful sense of the ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> and some of the postings you put on are just they really amuse me and i think wow <laughs> this this guy's quite courageous in so many ways so can you tell us a little bit about your background because i know your background is extraordinarily interesting um in in your your life path that's followed so far yeah oh it's such a long story but ba basically I, I was a pretty mixed up young young kid into all sorts of things um weird and wonderful things but very shy very um i'm still quite shy incidentally um very kind of um i suppose quite down on himself i you know not very academic blah 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 um and always wanting to be something that i wasn't um and i tried various things tried to join the marines once believe it or not tried to become you know karate superstar you know, all these sort of things and in the end I, I found my vocation in becoming an ordained priest so i, I ended up a, a vicar in the church of england in many ways i loved it and in, in other ways there was a square peg in a round hole um and that came to an, an, an abrupt end um and i and and since since then which was i think about 2007 i really got or the, Ch the church of england is, is a is a wonderful institution and it's amongst out of all of the churches i think it's probably the one that's enables people to explore the most but it's still difficult to do the sort of things that i've been doing so i've been exploring paganism and i've been doing lots of gay weddings and all these sort of things that you just don't do in the church of england um so when i when i left i had this sense of freedom and i i joined a druid group or i, I got in, invited to a, a, a druid uh, festival in glastonbury and i took to that like a duck to water um started reading books that i'd always wanted to but i always felt a bit nervous of because of my sort of church you know the, the fundamentalisms of the church and um and that's how it came across you Anthony um because 
I was with my daughter, who's also got an, an amazing sort of um, enchanted mind. And we saw your book in a bookshop, the Damon, and um, and she bought it for me. And, and I've got it here and she has got a lovely little um, uh, little thing that she wrote in the front. And that struck me as being, well, you, you mentioned my book, The Wizard's Gift, that there was there was almost a synchronistic link there because my little book was really a parable for what I think some of what you were saying, which is that we have this higher voice within us and we have this, um, I call it the wizard within in, in there, but it's exactly the same idea. Um, and in, in my previous book to that, The Gospel of Falling Down, which was all about finding beauty and failure, I talk a lot about the, the two voices and it's very, very similar to, to, to what you're saying. So, so naturally, and then I think I tried to get in touch with you and, you know, the rest is history. But yeah, so um, does that say a little bit about where I come from? And <laughs> I've lost your, your voice. Sorry, no, it was me. I was on mute. I was on okay. mute. It's, it's always so unprofessional. It's untrue. You know, we'll do it in sign language and see if we can work it out that way. Um, yeah, I mean, I found that when when I read uh, The Wizard's Gift, I was reminded of so many novels that I read when I was a child. It's very much the, I think the German term is, I think it's Lebensromain. Right. The, the, the technique of a young man, a young person searching for something. And I mean, Herman Hess was the great writer of this kind mm. of theme, you know, with Narcissus and Goldman and various other books. But it's the idea of how, you know, we meet this older person who guides us, mm. who is clearly a manifestation of ourselves in some mm. way. And there's a kind of a reversal of, of mm. the roles. And we realize that, you know, mm. we have this inner guide. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I, I felt that it, it I read it almost like poetry. Mm -hmm. I remember reading it because you have very, very short chapters and you have the two characters and the way in which the short chapters work mm -hmm. together. And I thought the writing style was phenomenally good. And mm -hmm. I'd strongly suggest if anybody out there, if they are interested in reading The Wizard's Gift, really, really do it. I thoroughly, thoroughly would recommend it to anybody. It's a, it's a wonderful book. Mm -hmm. But moving forward then, in terms of um, your life story, your mm -hmm. own, your own Liebens Romain, um, I, would you consider yourself still to be a Christian after all this? I've, I've certainly had moments where I've thought perhaps I wasn't. Um, I'll tell you why I still think I am. I'll, I'll, I'll come to that in a moment. I'm, I'm wary of the word. First of all, Christian, it's got so many connotations, you know, everything from kind of Donald Trump and his lot to um, sort of um, extreme forms of fundamentalism in various, you know, isms. Um, it's, and, um, it's hitting us again. Is it? Oh, yeah. gosh. Wonder what Let's, that is. Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> yeah, so Christian to me is, is a difficult word, and I normally qualify it with another term, like, say, progressive Christian or liberal Christian. Even those, though, are, 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 not, um, are not perfect. But I, I think I, what, I, what I consider to be my kind of base is and, and it's, this might sound cheesy but it is the man jesus of nazareth um and i think if you if you have a faith that is connected to him whether you believe in the literal son of god stuff or not i think i think you can use the word christian um i i i, I sort of i ebb and flow you know I, I i used to say actually the beauty of the of the church of england was it's it's broad enough to let you drift a little and sort of um grow and then maybe you know find yourself outside of it for a while and then come back in and i th i think christianity is very much like that i mean at, at the heart of it is a very beautiful message um a very messy message um and one that i really believe which is that it's incarnation is that all things uh, have the divine within them and this this uh, this uh, image that we're going to come up um come to in a few weeks time of the manger scene it's anything but a sanitized christmas card image it's a it's a homeless couple refugees with a, about to give birth in a in a really shitty stable full of animals and you know it's, it's a messy muddled up um and yet the, the, this is the picture of of deity and humanity joined together and so it's, it's a beautiful symbol um how can that 
have turned into something completely the opposite really of of um of powerful people up on thrones looking down on you know it's so it's, it's a it's a very complex um it's a difficult question i i i love being in the place that i am now which is outside the officialdom of the church but still able to have these connections with people um still able to feel that i'm a priest and i'm a priest because i believe everybody is a priest and i'm a magician because i believe everybody is a magician and it's and it's the, the magician and the priest in me is trying to awaken the, the magician and the priest in other people um you know a tree can be a priest if 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 a priest is some sort of ma mediator between deity and 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 matter then a tree can be a conductor for that or a, a beautiful flower or a sunset and so of course people can be and animals can be you know we're, we're all part of a, of a this is where this is where perhaps i <laughs> wouldn't last very long if i came back into the church of england because i just wouldn't be allowed to say that sort of stuff or i would but i'd be seen as a, a weirdo <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's interesting here coming in with, with Sarah, because I know, Sarah, you've started going back to church recently, haven't you? And you're finding it's quite intriguing you. Right. Yeah, I mean, I've got a uh, quite high tolerance for being considered a weirdo. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, I really love so much about church. But what I struggle with is exactly what you were talking about, Mark, this kind of like um, rigidness around talking mm. around the validity of other faiths and beliefs yeah. and um i will be having these kind of deep theological conversations sometimes and you think wow we're really like talking we're really engaging and we're both independent individuals and then there'll be almost this kind of um advertising pitch that starts coming and becomes you know at some point you're just going to have to say yes to jesus and i was like mm. i say yes to jesus all the time i love a bit of jesus but can i also be into osiris and isis and mm. and trees and nature and mm. love nature and mm. and there's a, this sort of glamorization of suffering and sin mm. in a way that i do mm. also struggle with as well this mm. i you know this kind of um you can see why people go crazy with the church in a way as well with the power of it because it is so powerful it's so powerful yeah. to get people together in prayer and to create this altered high state of consciousness that that's how the kind of superiority develops in this like mm. we've got special access to this altered high state that no one mm. else um, knows about or can achieve but of course people are achieving this all the time in very a variety of different ways mm. so um yeah I, I love the idea of being able you know because also the idea of sacred space i love as well and i love the idea of you know once a week going to some sacred space that isn't about well i mean the church is also has a sort of um commercial aspect to it in a lot of ways mm. i mean i've been going to a church which is associated with the alpha course and mm -hmm. this alpha course thing I, I had a friend who i also met in church and it was both like oh what are you doing here what are you doing here and then, mm. and then um she was saying oh they talked me into the alpha course eventually and she was like don't bother it's really boring you just watch loads of videos and then they don't ever you can't ever like agree to disagree it is always just this is the facts and you either believe it or you don't so yeah i mean it's an endlessly fascinating conversation to mm. me I wish, well we you know, love the idea of the our nation having its own sort of religion but mm. i would love it if it was more kind of open and yeah. um, that there was a bit yeah. more flexibility but there is there's so much love generosity and warmth there and they do so yeah. much amazing things for the community that i yeah. in a way the positives definitely seem to outweigh the negatives well yeah. this is this yeah. is it isn't it you know which is how you harmonize the idea of christianity and what you know paganism and i know both mm. of you sit in both those camps so mark in terms of that how do you harmonize paganism and christianity yeah the the, the funny thing is is i i find it odd that people find it odd <laughs> you know I, I, I find it and put on, on both sides and and you know I, I find some some in the pagan world um to be incredibly eclectic uh, they can have gods of of hindu gods on their altars and and celtic and but you talk about jesus or church and suddenly the shutters go back now i understand why and that's because jesus and the church have been always seen to be exclusive um but i you know i've i've never had an issue and if you look if you look back in the church's past even some of the very well-known kind of figures like francis of assisi who's see, still seen as a as a great saint in the roman catholic church and, and you can't get a more authoritarian church than that and yet he wrote songs to mother 
um, Mother Moon, you know, to, to, to Sister Moon and Brother Sun and, and the wind and the, and the you know, he, he called the birds his brothers. I mean, it, it was pagan. You know, it was, it was what we would all, if I started saying that in a church meeting when I was still a vicar, um, someone would probably say, oh, you sound very pagan. It, it comes from, you know, St. Francis of Assisi. So it's, and it's, it's not just, I mean, it's, it's all the way through. There's, um, you know, in, in, in some of the Jesus stories too, there's, there's a real earthiness. I think the trouble is, is that the, the Christianity has sort of developed a, a, almost a, a split sort of self, you know, it's the, the sacred and the profane. And it's, and it's kind of ended up with this idea that to keep yourself pure, you have to almost cocoon yourself within some sacred world. And, and that is precisely the opposite of what Christianity really meant, what, what Jesus originally meant. Um, one of my, the, 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 my last bishop um, before I left the church, Bingham, he used to say, God cannot look upon darkness. And I thought, where the hell did you get that from? Because it's not from, actually, it's not from, you know, the whole point, again, of this story we're just about to, it's, it's a God plunging him, herself, in human mess and muddle and seeing the beauty of that. And, um, you know, the, the idea of the cross, and I don't believe the cross is, is a divine, is a sacrifice to an angry God. It's 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 a very powerful image of a, a god figure embracing the very darkest point of of, of, of being human you know the, the, throw throw the most at me and, and 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 still being able to kind of offer love within that context um and there was a there was a medieval tradition called the harrowing of hell which sounds awful but it was the idea that of, of jesus sort of almost getting to the point of visiting the ones that we would see as as totally without any spirit and and uh, and bringing them in so it's it's, it's it's totally inclusive i don't like some of that kind of language but it but it's there in the you know in the tradition um and i think t so to me going back to your, your question there is there is no need to to find it a problem i mean i always had one, one of the wonderful things about the church of england was that um in my training they taught us to be or they they expected us to be very open to other faiths they they, they sent us on um you know trips to to leicester to spend time with hindus and, and muslims it was absolutely wonderful and there's very little um when you when you when you look at hinduism it's, it's, it's very similar to, to modern paganism you know there are people within hinduism who who have um uh, very similar ideas of god to 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 the pagans that i know some are polytheistic hard polytheistic which means literally separate gods some have more of a soft polytheism so they believe that these are faces of the one true or the or the one kind of um spirit the brahman um and i know pagans who who come to their understanding of god and goddess that way and that's what i believe you know i believe that we see glimpses of God in all things and in all peoples and in all faiths and uh, you know to me there doesn't have to be an issue with it and it's um yeah it, it's frustrating because I I just wish people wish more people would get that that when I was I, I live in Lempster now which is the place where I used to be the vicar and you know I used to invite um Hindu uh, sorry Tibetan Buddhists to come and and, and do chanting in the church so, so that people could experience you know the difference and the beauty of other faiths so one, one other thing i've noticed with church as well is this, this sort of inability to acknowledge and look at any of the like evil that's been done in the name of christianity in the past like it doesn't exist at all i, I actually find that kind of scary because yeah. they're people that you think are really nice and they and um you really get them but there's this i, I was talking to one of them recently about all the um children that they found the bodies of underneath all these churches in um canada and they're mm. like oh i don't i've never heard anything about that like mm. thinkable that that it's like this mm. complete mm. separation from reality and yeah. i think that christianity would do so well if it just said yes like the power of this thing can corrupt people we mm. accept that that's why you have to be really careful when yeah. um, you know you you do start to i think there's an element of suspending a certain disbelief as well especially if you're yeah. brought up 
I was brought up completely atheist. My mum and dad sent us to Sunday school, but just to get rid of us, like they weren't at all <laughs> in uh, religion. And I was always told it was ridiculous, you know. Yeah. So when I meet a lot of people at church, they're unaware of the level of indoctrination that they've gone through since childhood. And, you know, yeah. they, they do all these little kids groups and toddlers groups to get people in really young because the kids love dancing to Christian mm. rock and all this sort of stuff. And, you know, it does offer a lot to people, but I think mm. that there needs to be a bit more transparency um, yeah. And they shouldn't be afraid of facing their shadow because I actually yeah. think that would open it up to a lot more people. Yeah, absolutely right. And that's the uh, going back to that um, th this this idea of um, my bishop who said, you know, God cannot look upon darkness. It creates this this terrible sort of idea that to stay pure, you have to not look at the darkness and the shadows and 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 avoid it. And it, of course, it creates a bigger one, um, and then it comes out in all of those areas. And, um, you know, psych psychologically, it's pretty screwed up, you know, in that in that sense, it, it, and it and it projects it onto figures like the devil or um, or other other faith or pagans. You know, it does a lot of projection. Um, I so. think the problem probably is, um, you know, in terms of theology has always quite fascinated me and the concept of theophany and yeah. the concept of if uh, God is is omnipotent, omnipotent, omniscient and omnipotent how does he tolerate the existence of evil and of course this is why the gnostics came up with their concept of the demiurge and the idea that there's a god behind god mm. and there's a, this good god and the, the god of the old mm. testament Ye 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 yewar or jehovah was smiting people everywhere and i've just come back from a tour of uh, jordan and it's mm. interesting there to see because we went near to the site of sodom and gomorrah at the bottom right. of the dead sea wow. and it's extraordinary to see these places geographically that you know as a mm. kid and the walls of Jericho, we could see Jericho in the distance one time, you know, and it's extraordinary. Mm. And I think you've obviously been very interested in these ideas and the challenges uh, of Christian belief system. And your first book was actually called, you know, The Gospel of Falling Down. Um, and do you think there's really a, a, a good news in this failure? Do you think that there is something that can be positively taken from this? Yeah. While, while I totally agree with what Sarah said at the beginning about there's too much emphasis on perhaps suffering and sin, um, I, I, I do feel that, that that Christianity is very success orientated and very perfectionistic and um, and very kind of um, if you do the right things and if you're a good person, blah, 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 which again creates the shadow because you, you don't want to look at yourself in that in that regard um so but i th i think to me the story again going back to the figure of jesus it's the it's the pre precise opposite of that it's fine it, the, the people that he always struggled with were the perfectionists the people that he couldn't almost teach were the ones who thought that they had all the answers and, and were the, the you know the religious terms the good people they were the ones who went to the temple went to the synagogue went went to the churches went to you know um the the people that that seemed to be ready for his very radical message were those at the bottom of the pile and those who'd made a mess of their lives and those who'd been um for whatever reason marginalized and i and i i see this within myself i um i wrote that book because i i mean i I used to make one cock up after another <laughs> in the church and and it i kind of i i have i have been at rock bottom you know in, in many different ways and i don't like that place and i don't encourage anybody to, to 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 go there intentionally but we all from time to time we break we we shatter we crack and in that brokenness is the potential i think to see the light in a way that we often don't when we're at the top of the ladder because then it's all about us you know we're, we're not open we like that zen story about the teapot when or the the, the, the teacup when the teachers the, the the students rabbiting on about how clever he is and the students pouring more and more tea in the cup until it's overflowing and the, and the student says why why are you doing that he says well look you know you're, you're like this teapot you're just so full of yourself you, you're not open you, and and that's i think it's it's about openness and brokenness is a place is, is the place I, i've certainly ex experienced this myself where if you stay with it and if you if you're kind of brave enough to, to look into those cracks 
you can find beautiful light and and it's it's a metaphor and a, and a and a universal archetype as well it's in so many stories you know the person who comes back after a, after a, a complete prodigal son is a classic of, of jesus you know the guy who makes a complete and utter mess of his life totally deserved you know he, he um deserved to end up in that mess but he came back to to pure grace and and was welcomed by this these wide open arms of his father that that's a metaphor for for coming back home in your brokenness um, so I'm, I'm not in any way suggesting that that suffering is a good thing or that even brokenness is a good thing but it's just a natural human thing and if we you know um if we just allowed ourselves i think to and it's where also where we find that voice um i used to do a, an exercise i used to run retreats called the gospel of falling down and um one of the things i used to do was to, to try to get people to uh, um almost it's a little bit manufactured this but to 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 go into a meditation where they um imagine or relive a certain point in their life which is broken and then to write a letter from god to themselves and it's not from god it's from their higher self um, and it usually blows their minds because of because of what actually they teach themselves and um yeah so I mean, I really like that uh, idea of your higher self, you know, which I'd argue, you know, in my writings, in my latest book, I'm coming up with a concept that I call the Godamon, uh -huh. which is the, so I'll, I say that, you know, there's the Edelon, which is living within the simulation, then there's the Daemon, which is your higher self, then beyond that is what I call the Uber Daemon which is the Jungian collective unconscious of humanity. Mm -hmm. Then above that, I have a concept I call the Godamon, which is effectively mm -hmm. like the Orain Sof that uh -huh. you have within Vedanta, within uh, Kabbalah and Brahman. Right. And the idea, it's, it's, it's kind of God perceiving itself through humanity. It's God mm -hmm. living within its own soap opera. It's embodying mm -hmm. itself. And in this, I'm reminded of Philip K. Dick's book, uh, The Divine Invasion where you have a young boy called Manny, who in fact is God, who's re-embodied himself into the universe. And again, it comes back to a phrase I use a lot, the Bill Hicks phrase of the idea of, um, we are all one consciousness experiencing right. itself subjectively. Mm -hmm. And of course, every religious belief system and every esoteric form of religious belief system from Sufism, as I say, to Kabbalah, mm -hmm. they all have the same idea, find the God within you know find who that spark of the pleroma that's inside mm. you you know mm. so using gnostic mm. terms and i think that idea you, you're using the gospel of falling down i think that's a wonderful idea i love that the idea of write your higher self writing a letter to yourself mm. about the pain you've gone through because we've all been there mm. and one of the most wonderful things i find about your work and again if anybody's watching this or anybody's watching the recordings do check out mark's work and mark's magic tricks and everything because mark does something quite extraordinary he uses magic and illusion within his ministry and could you tell us a little bit of how that started how you had this parallel career of a member of the magic circle and a church of england vicar as well <laughs> Yeah, it goes back to those very early days when I was into all sorts of things as a young lad. Um, I was into Arthur C. Clarke, you know, the magazines, The Unexplained, Men in Black and um, all that kind of stuff, UFOs. Um, and alongside that, I was also very into interested in in magic as illusion. And for some reason, there's some people who are, who are magic illusionists, they're, they're very, very atheistic and very... Um, very skeptical so they wouldn't ever be looking at books on you know unexplained because they think that their their gift is to explain the unexplained by because it's all illusion to them i, I i'm not in that camp at all i think if you, if you go back far enough magic as in illusion sleight of hand came out of the other form of magic and if you if you go back to the the ancient shamans of almost every from siberia to native american um there are there are there's a wonderful book by a guy called um, Eugene Berger um, and Robert Neal called Magic and Meaning, and they've studied this. And in the in the ancient um, uh, mythologies of, of of these sort of tribal um, religious um, traditions, that there's evidence that they used a lot of. There's there's one illusion called the the egg bag, which is you might have seen a, a magician 
keep it, it pulls eggs out of a bag and it's empty and it could, that goes back to a native american illusion which was called a snake bag and they and they they used to use it um there was a snake in it but it didn't look like it and they would pull it out and it would be a symbol of um i think in i, I think this was a a symbol of, of something negative that they they would um they would sort of there would be some sort of ritual they, they would pull this this snake out and i think it would happen in reverse it would vanish it or, or something but it was basically an illusion that was used by the shaman and then passed down to to to, to other shamans but um the the faithful the the the, the, the people would would think of it as real magic um there's there's a modern form of that in um in the far east called psychic surgery which i think is is clearly manipulated it's clearly a um, sleight of hand but it actually works because people see things removed from their bodies and some of them seem to get better and you know it's it's a strange sort of thing and it's where magic kind of magic as illusion taps into the other form of magic so going back to to the story i i kind of um when i became first of all a pentecostal christian that's how i got into the the christian um tradition i had to i didn't have to but i was pretty much encouraged to um sever all my links with anything sort of magical or martial arts and anything that wasn't you know um any, anything that was from the east was seen as dodgy um anything magical was seen as very dangerous so for for a few years I, I i put a lid on it but then when i became an anglican um i needed something i felt that rather than to, to save me becoming one of these very parsonical hey, the lord be with you all sort of characters you know <laughs> i thought i need i need a hobby that's not churchy so I thought, well, oh, magic, you know, it's something I've always been interested in. And um, so when I left theological college, I was by then a member of the magic circle and used it a lot in originally in school assemblies to, to as object lessons and, you know, to talk about Easter by breaking something and then making it come back together again, th those sort of things. But as time went on, I, 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 I use it less in that way now and more as a an encourager of synchronicity because i think it i think when you when you're in that kind of alert state and or that enchanted state and it might be that you've seen a sunset or you've seen something beautiful or, or listened to a beautiful piece of music when you're in that open state of being um i think you can spot the synchronicities that are all around us much easier and i've, I've seen this in in some of the mind reading illusions that i used to do on stage um you know people would come up to me after and say i know that was a trick but you won't believe what just happened and then they tell me something and it blows my mind and it's sort of you know it's I, I do find that incredibly exciting um some people in the in the kind of magical with a k world do find it difficult to see my magic as relevant because they see it almost as derogatory you know and, and saying that that, that therefore magic must be a con it's not that at all to me it's no, no more than than father christmas stories are a con that they're, they're a beautiful enchanted way of waking up children in, or, or bringing children into the mystery of christmas you know stories of father christmas they're not they're not a con at all and in the same way the mind reading style magic or, or any any form of magic i think is is a is a beautiful art form when I when I, go, I used to go to Blackpool and, and watch the big illusions, um, used to go once a year to a, at a conference. And you know, when you see someone flying to, to a piece of music through on the on the stage and over your heads, it take you know it's like a real life Peter Pan, and and you can't but be totally awestruck by it. And you know, because it, it it taps into those universal archetypes and the fact that we all we would all love to fly and and maybe we do in our dreams, you know, that, that sort of thing. So, long winded answer that. Sorry. <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, the whole idea of magic, you know, is it, it's illusion and it's it's to do with diversion of attention and everything else as well. But it's very much a psychological thing, mm. and it's very much as you say, it's almost opening you up, yeah, to the magical. You know, the idea, yeah. you know, is uh, my background, you know, and uh, when, when I was when I was at university, we were studying the sociology of religion mm. and how religions themselves work on the question of illusion. Mm. You know, and I think that the, the, the way you bring the two together is extraordinary 
because you bring the magical in and that there are many friends of mine who who are, 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 are magicians i mean my mother used to work. my mother was a magician's assistant for many many oh, really? years yeah, oh, yeah 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 and she would never ever divulge the the things she was involved in yeah. because she said you know she was the lady that got cut in two and everything mm. else in fact she was the original you know there was debbie mcgee Mm. <laughs> oh, my mother was called uh, Frances McGee, and she always uh, argued she was the original Debbie McGee, but wow. she had the wrong name. Um, uh, and but she'd never tell me of how the tricks worked. And she said, but sometimes we really felt that sometimes there was a magical presence that seemed to take over. And she said, sometimes the magic became the magic. Mm. Um, and I yeah. know that you, you've got one or two ideas about showing us a couple of things now, which I'm really excited to, to yeah. move on to um just one thing to point out since covid i haven't done any apart from i did a few tricks last night but i haven't done any live magic i used to do big shows and so some of this may go wrong may, you know but it doesn't matter um and um and also it's, it's the first time doing it over zoom mm -hmm. so um i'm aware that you know pe people might that you can't see everything and hopefully uh, let's, let's just try it um so um i know that you've both got a pack of cards a uh, regular pack of playing cards I've, I've got some here as well in a moment i'm going to put a, a blindfold on myself because it's it's the only thing i can do to try to convince people that i can't see what's going on because i could of course have another screen there another screen there t showing me everything that you see i haven't but people might think i have um and um this is this is something i used to I used to do to try to bring in the idea of synchronicity um so if, if you could just open the cards that you've both got open the boxes um just regular deck cards yeah lovely and you're just mixing them up um in a moment i'm going to and i'm gonna have to ask you because i'm gonna have a blindfold i want you to be able to see can you see these cards yes sir can you I, see them as well if i do that and you can see that I'm going to go very slowly in a moment and I'll, I'll cut them a few times. In fact, do you want to just say cut whenever? Cut. Yeah. Sarah, Sarah do you want to join? Sarah? Cut. Yeah. Oh, okay. So now um, what I'm going to do is <laughs> this is this is what I used to use on. Oh, it's going to be difficult with, um, with my headphones on. But, <laughs> okay. It's, it's totally steel it's solid steel and i also have somewhere can i still find the cards i think this is going to be very interesting with the headphones on as well <laughs> <laughs> this this is live folks this is the real deal okay so i've got to find those i've got a bit of arthritis right what i want you to do now i'll get you both to do it First of all, as I, if I, can you see, is that about the right? Yeah. 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 So if I go very slowly, first of all, Anthony, just say stop. Stop. Yeah. And then Sarah, just say stop. Stop. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you the top card. Can you see that? Don't, don't say what it yeah. is, but yeah. memorize it. Put those out of the way and oh, take all this. <clears throat> right cards are over there so hopefully people will be convinced that I, I haven't seen that so i want you both now to hold the cards up that you're holding that's it and then um can you hear me yes yeah okay so if you cut them anywhere you like in the middle and then show me the, the card that's there yeah lovely okay so let's say a queen of clubs they're French cards, aren't they? Now, clubs in tarot is wands, which is a fire element. So I would assume from that you're a fire sign. Yes. You, yeah? Okay. Yes. What fire. are you? What, what are you? There there is. Is. Okay, so fire sign. And also the queen is made up, it's numerically number two and one. It's a 12, yeah? Mm -hmm. So it's a, yeah your birthday isn't it it's 12. oh my god yeah 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 wait okay so that's good and so that is exactly that's a perfect for you and also sarah can you just show me do the same please i can't quite see do you have to say something so i what 
can you read it out please because i can't see it's at the back seven of spades seven of spades okay so spades is associated with the sword suit which is usually seen as air but i don't see you as an air person you're more water because i can see the color in you so are you scorpio or cancer cancer right okay um seven this is going to tell me something um this is a difficult one i i think i'm going to go i'm going to choose one of your one of your cards to help me find the card that you both saw i'm going to go without with anthony's which was a 12 which is numerically 12 so it's either numerically 12 a one which is an ace or a two of clubs your card now could just tell me your date of birth please sarah uh 22nd of june that's, a, that's enough 22 two so it's a two it was the two of clubs it was, that <laughs> it was. yeah yeah <laughs> now the weird thing is what well, do you remember i sent you an email yesterday yes can you open it now yes. you haven't opened it have you no i haven't and let's see what that says so i've got it on my phone this is hopefully the synchronicity okay so right this is not to be opened until tomorrow okay so if you can open that okay Oh my word. <laughs> what does it say? It says, I have a feeling this card relates to you, Tony, and it's the two of clubs. <laughs> there we go. So, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Do you, want wow. One with, do you want one with books before Sarah goes? Oh, yes, please. Yeah. Okay. So, now um, it's another thing to do with synchronicity. Um, I know that. Anthony's got a book of his there and I've got my wizard book here so what I'm going to do and we always felt that there was a bit of a connection between these two books so um I'll do this with um with Sarah well, both of you because it might be difficult to see if I flick like that and it doesn't matter if I see this if I flick like that can you can you just say stop whenever stop. you like stop stop there yeah. yeah so can you see that number of that page yeah do you just lift it up slightly yeah yes i can okay so can you turn to that page in your book and i can see what the page was doesn't matter it's okay it, we can say what what was it anthony what was the no, page 92. okay can you turn to that page in the book that you've got as well sarah this is really interesting just to see if there's so anthony on your book if you put that page in front of you yeah and I know that in your books you like to italicize big blocks but also independent words within he's smiling already so the first word or words that you see don't say what they are but okay. on that page just keep those in your mind yep so yep. the first words that you see, keep those in. and then Sarah the on that page in your book could you just read any sentence that strikes you as interesting a few seedling pines were growing up there too and i knew that when a few more years enough, came it's enough a few seedlings were growing up their pine too yeah you said the word two yeah. that's the word that's come to me two second sight seeing things happening again um deja vu yes that's your word that's my word deja vu <laughs> yeah there we go so there's a link between those <laughs> i think yeah, that, that, all of this i'm enjoying anthony's incredulous <laughs> <face the most. laughs> let, let me let me just there was something else that i sent you on um i think it was on messenger um it was a picture of my old-fashioned phone yes you did yeah i i sent you that just because you could you could verify that i'm not um again being too manipulative here but um i've got a piece of paper so if you were just as a matter of interest on these old phones you could when, when you did a text or when you press the buttons you, you could you could have a number or a couple of letters so deja vu um what number would you need to press for d um so three you can check this afterwards okay so and um, d, d e that's two threes um j is five uh deja a is two 
and then V and you are both eight. Now earlier on, <coughs> Anthony came up with a random number that's right behind me on my wall. And I think you might find it. So that, that's, that, that is extraordinary. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's fun. Absolutely. There's, 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 there's really so much you can do with with this stuff um and it really does relate to to the sort of spiritual world and the psychological world there's something else that can i just show you one more just because mm, it's mm, please the, the, i've got another another deck of cards here which i'm not going to open for a moment um now have you got uh so your your name anthony it's got a has it got a th it has yes so you so you can spell anthony two different ways so, so one would be eight letters one would be seven letters but you're tony which is four letters. Yes. there's another word um that so philip is another word for example you can spell with two l's mm. so it's got this it's gonna be eight letters seven letters or four so we're gonna go with philip because it's slightly like your name so i want you to think of someone called philip you can, it can be a real person or an imaginary person have you got someone in your mind yes no? yes just, just call him phil um i want you to create a card for phil now to help you do that what i you, you'll notice that earlier on i said that um fire people are clubs or ones in tarot so phil it doesn't matter if you don't know his date of birth but if you think of him as a fiery sort of person passionate um he would be a club if you think of him as a very romantic loving sort of person he'd obviously be a heart if he's earthy and grounded he'd be a diamond and if he's very intellectual and academic he'd be a spade and they relate to the four elements as well earth air fire water mm. numerically he could be a king or a jack or he could be any of the numbers it could be king jack queen it could be it could be any of the numbers is there a number that you can associate with him this is harder to get but just think of a number or a or a suit or a um court card okay don't say what it is okay but yeah so you've got a suit and a value yeah okay right so um just going to show you this because these cards by the way they're all named so we've got jake i'll have to stand up jake paul mona vic ken Ellen, rick sam trev Ruth, Dave, Don, Jean, Rose, Buck, Sven. All sorts of names, male and female, all the way through Bud, Alec, Lisa, Jill, Jane. So what was the card that you were thinking of for Phil? It was uh, clubs and, yep. a, and the ace. Ace of clubs. Okay, let's just find the ace of clubs. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's that that you say i like because it it then if you do that within there's a bit of fun within something like a retreat that you can then start talking about personality types and and jungian psychology and, well, and what i thought was was interesting there as well was we now have a synchronicity because uh -huh. as you probably are not aware i wrote a biography of philip k dick the science oh, fiction right, author right, and when right. you were flicking through and if people want to rule back on that one of the cards was called dick mm. and i was waiting for dick i was waiting for that to happen really? and lo and behold you flick through and it was philip and Very then good. dick yeah, um, amazing. and i thought whoa now is this just attention bias is it confirmation bias or is there something more in terms of synchronicities here? I mean, yeah. I, I do find it. Sadly, Sarah's has had to go because she's about uh, to do another right, event. Yeah, yeah. Um, but your opinions on this, do you find that when you you do these magic tricks that something more happens, like an almost yeah. kind of an egregorial happening yeah, where yeah. you get into the zone? Yeah, and and, I, and I, I'm totally honest. Um, magician, <laughs> magicians aren't honest because they say there's a coin in the hand when there, when there isn't. But but I'm honest in the sense that everything that I've done, you, you, you know, is is illusion, except that I always leave the one percent for. And I used to say this on on stage for for genuine magic to occur, which it, and I'm totally not in control of. And I've I've had so many. I said earlier on so many instances where people you know came up to me afterwards and say you would not believe and 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 they feel you know totally 
warmed by the experience because some something's happened and things that are you know for for example there, there was there was one occasion where i did something with numbers and did something with um uh i think it was a four digit number and um and the, and and the and the person was thinking about i think it was a, a dog who just died i'm pretty sure it's called jack um and it it wasn't part of the trick, but but for some reason it came up and and, and it spelt Jack the the the, uh, the fall, and I, I'm trying to remember now. It, it was really mind blowing, but I've forgotten the actual the, the sort of um, the punchline of that. But it was it was beautiful because she had tears in her eyes. She came up she came up to me afterwards and said it was as if he he was there, you know. And mm. it's lovely, and it might just be a, a, a coincidence, but I. And it doesn't matter to me wh whether it is, but they certainly seem to happen more when people are in that kind of expectant, open state. Um, and, um, you know, like yesterday with those cards, you know, um, yeah, that, 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 was, that was manipulated. But what happened afterwards was totally magical because I, I, mean, I don't know whether they, um, whether they'd, ever talked about you know they, they were engaged but you know they, they decided then I was going to be their wedding celebrant it's just lovely you know I find it really touching and and special well, um, it's to me it's almost you know the idea again you probably haven't read my book The Hidden Universe but I I, I, I come up with a concept I call the egregorial mm. which is that you know you look into quantum physics and you look into the relationship between anticipation and observer effects and things yeah. coming into reality you know subatomic yeah. particles are a wave until you observe them then they become mm. a point particle in a location in time and space and i just wonder that when you get into that kind of magical thinking when you move out of the mundane into what um Henri corbin the the french philosopher would call the mund mundus imaginalis you start to create something else that is greater than ourselves that has been created by us collectively mm. and i sometimes feel that when you're in engaged in a kind of a magical trick there's a kind of symbiotic relationship between the illusionist and the magician mm. and the audience mm. and it's almost like you know going back to religious beliefs it's almost like the guru it's almost mm. like the prophet the way that they can engender enthusiasm literally in the religious term of yeah. enthusiasm you know the out of body yeah. feeling yeah. yeah and i think you know there was something then that happened then which you then open yourself up to astonishment don't you mm. and wonderment yeah absolutely. which is what you created then yeah and it's and the, the beautiful thing to me about about mind magic is that the magician is the person who's who's in the audience you know uh, again i used to say this um quite quite uh, almost every time i perform um i'm not the magician here you know I, i'm i'm enabling all of you to be the magicians and and i and it's again it sounds like oh yeah come on but it's true you know um we are all makers of magic and we we can all do wonderful things we can all use our imagination and create things and um and i want to i want to use my magic to encourage people to to find their magic um same as as i said about about priesthood you know it's not it's not my possession it's not something i possess it's it's something that we all are and um you know the the the, the symbol of of the magician is um it's it's an art it's a, an archetype that um you know we well <coughs> Ga gandalf merlin you know all, all of these figures and, and i think there's one of them in all of us you know that's what that book was about really that the wizard's mm. gift you know there's a there's a gandalf in all of us um yeah so it's interesting stuff um and i'll probably never never really work out what's going on um i'm wary of there, there are some things i'm i'm wary of I, i'm wary of of um of the type of, of magic you know where people claim things that are not true of themselves and i think there's a there's a lot of that um and there's actually a there's a body within the magic circle that looks into that um because it's very cautious of you know th there there is a fraudulent aspect to that and mm. um i think i think there are there are loads of 
very gifted and talented people out there who who do wonderful things, but there are also people who do make a lot of money out of conning others, you know, in the church world and in the sort of psychic world. I think um, this 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 is the perfect moment because I think what I'd like to do here, I'd like to have this 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 discussion and interview as a two parter. Yeah, because what I'd like to do, I think we've just scratched the surface. And what I'd like to do is to say, OK, fine, we'll we'll because we've we've done our hour. But what I'd like mm -hmm. to do is to if you're available sometime next week, maybe we could revisit and have a, yeah. a longer discussion. Yeah, because I think what's happening here is we're running out of time. And I feel yeah. that we've got what you're touching upon there, I think, is of profound importance, mm. both, I would imagine, to the audience but also to me personally, because this yeah. whole thing of the interface between anticipation and what is reality and isn't is profoundly important. Yeah. So what I'd like to do is to say that we'll call it, if you can now let people know how they can contact you, and then I will announce in the next couple of days, we can agree what day mm. next week we'll yeah. revisit yeah. and we'll yeah. do a longer time period. Yeah, Because I think we're just scratching the sure. surface and I may invite two or three other people yeah. to be involved because i think sure. we are really getting into something so important here lovely we, yeah very hard let it go i, I have got a, a weekdays and then next week i've got it's, it's one of those weeks i've got a lot of um a lot of funerals on sadly because um they, i had a few weeks off and they've sort of so it might be perhaps a little bit longer than a week if that's okay okay no that's fine we'll agree right. that and yeah, we'll, but, we'll announce it everywhere and say yeah. we're revisiting this it will sure. give people the opportunity to see this yeah. And see what we, we've already created here in Brilliant. terms of that. And I am sure yeah, that the be. interest will be great once this gets out there and goes out. Because, Mark, that was extraordinary. I, I am still, my head is spinning. <laughs> my head is absolutely spinning. Fabulous. And I know it was a trick, but you can actually see how that can be manipulated to draw people in to something. Yeah. And it is one of my big issues at the moment is the amount of charlatans that are out there, yeah. the amount of snake oil salesmen that are manipulating oh, yeah, people and yeah, making a lot yeah, of money. Yeah. And I feel we need to, to do something about that because yeah. uh, it discredits serious research into the occult and everything else as well. Yeah. So if people want to contact you, uh, want to check out your website and everything else, yeah. can you let me know, let me know. But my website is called uh, marktazinministry.co.uk. It does come across as very much a celebrant website because that's what it is. That's that's how I that's how I make a living. Um, um, so I'm a, but you it has got a contact page, and um, you know, I'm very happy to talk to people and, um, and and give other details. By the way, I didn't manipulate you choosing your own birth card. You had total control over that. Yes, twelfth, and it was uh, an Aries sign. So. <laughs> I, that 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 was the most extraordinary and i knew where I, as soon as you said that, i knew where it was going and i thought no this is just so bizarre <laughs> just so mind-numbingly bizarre but wonderful brilliant Great. okay mark thank Lovely. you for that and thanks thank again to, to sarah who had to go yeah, off to, you, to do something else but we will be in contact we'll be in contact i'll be in contact with you next couple of days and we'll arrange yeah. something live in yeah. in maybe the week after next that will be Great. really wonderful Cheers. Thank, thank, thank you mark that was thanks absolutely so magnificent thank you <laughs> thanks anthony